I, I would point people to the book the Creature from Jekyll Island um, for a real thorough history on the inception of the Fed. There's an abridged version of this book called Dishonest Money by a guy named, uh, author last name Plummer, I believe. Um, and I read this book before Bitcoin, and this is what really got me turned on to the, the evils of, of central banking and the Fed. But the essentially, there were three attempts to implement a central bank in the United States, um, which failed. And Andrew Jackson, uh, US, former U.S. president, was a big proponent in keeping the banks out. He's, he has a lot of great quotes about the evils of central banking. I think there's a, I don't know if this story is, is accurate or not, but I think there's one where he punched a central banker in the face, actually, uh, at a meeting, which I thought was interesting. But the, the concept of central banking, to have a monopoly on the market for money, it, it's unconstitutional. It contradicts the principles on which America was founded. It's actually the fifth measure in uh, Karl Marx's 1848 manifesto of the Communist Party. So central banking is straight out of Marxism's playbook, uh, which I mentioned here. And it was incepted, the final, the third attempt in the Fed was successful in 1913. And it was basically done, uh, I think it was on Christmas Day or, or very close to Christmas Day when no one was paying attention to the media. They, uh, some of the most powerful people in the world went down on this little retreat to this island called Jekyll Island, just south of Georgia. Uh, and they basically laid out a plan to monopolize the monetary system to benefit themselves. And on the other side of that is uh, a group, you know, the owners of that system are basically a group of the wealthiest families in the world. Um, there's not actually, because it is a private corporate institution. This is not owned. There's this mystique that people think somehow the Federal Reserve is uh, a public good or public service or owned by the public, but it's just not true. I mean, it's just owned by a private banking cartel that then um, owns government essentially through that monopoly as well. And then they force that monetary network on society. Like you cannot compete with the U.S. dollar. There is no there is no free market competition in the sphere of fiat currency. And uh, yeah, they're kind of the silent, shadowy slave masters because they have this ability, as I, I quantify later in the piece, to essentially print human time or steal human time via this this mechanism of of uh, fiat currency. Um. So it, there's no moral justification for it whatsoever. Uh, I think they've only been able to get away with it because again, it's such a, it's a difficult to understand area. Um, relatively, like I think money is actually kind of simple to understand once you've gotten over a large hump of studying uh, economics and whatnot. But I think they took advantage of that, right? So they basically eliminated all Austrian uh, education from curriculum. There's no exploration of the first principles of money. Uh, no discussion of it whatsoever. If, you, if you've grown up in Western civilization and gone to a state curriculum, you'll know that government is essentially equated with God uh, in Econ 101. It's, it's the entity that's at the top of the chart. It suffers no trade-off. It can print money. It can, it can pull these different levers to control employment, and that's it. So it doesn't even explore the actual stakeholder interest in that organization. It doesn't even look at it as if it's human. When In fact, we all know that government is clearly full of humans who are you know, deceitful, malevolent creatures at times. And uh, it's, it's more easily understood as an institution of serfdom or something to that effect because you they've there's no equitable benefit a central bank can provide to an economy there's nothing they can do good for an economy literally not one thing and people think oh covid happened they printed money and sent checks to everyone that's a good thing it's not a good thing 
the reason no one has any savings is because money doesn't hold its value across time. If we're on a gold standard, everyone would have savings as an insurance policy against the uncertainty of the future to protect themselves against events like COVID striking. So, the, you know, I think the analogy is apt where it's the central bankers are the arsonist proclaiming themselves to be firefighters. They are the reason we are so fragile. The economy is so fragilized by the, the imposition of this debt-based currency. And then when the inevitable uh, shock comes, right, because the future is uncertain and shit happens, uh, that, fra that fragility shows itself. And then they step in um, by, by, a, by washing the markets with artificial liquidity to quote unquote save it. But what they are in fact doing is just confiscating value from others, reallocating it to the targeted few, which are usually larger corporations, politically favored few, big banks, uh, at the expense of those that receive money last. Um, and it's just, it's really bad. It's not, uh, not morally justifiable in any way, any conceivable way whatsoever. So I hope in this piece that I thoroughly destroyed the concept of inflation because I am really tired of having arguments with people I consider to be smart that can look me square in the face and tell me inflation is necessary for a good economy. It makes no sense. Hey guys, this is Robert Breedlove from Deep Conversations. I hope you found this content we've been putting out insightful, useful, uh, enjoyable. And if you, if you do, I'd like you to go out and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, consider signing up for our Patreon page, which is linked in our YouTube banner. Or consider sending us some sats to our Bitcoin address, which is in the description to this video. Um, I am extremely grateful for all of the outreach, all the messages, all the love and support you guys have sent our way as we continue to try and bring truth back to the world. Um, and on that topic, I'd like to encourage you to keep asking yourself and encourage you to ask others to ask themselves that very poignant and important question. What is money? Uh, just keep asking yourself that question and see what truth you find. All right. Thanks.